Batting seventh, first baseman, G-Man Choi. Hitting eighth and doing the catching, Carlos Perez. And batting ninth, second baseman, Gregorio Petit. On the mound with a record of two and four and an 8.70 ERA, right-hander Tim Lincecum. Now for the first pitch and the play-by-play, here's my partner, Terry Smith. Why, thank you very much, Mark Langston. We are moments away from the start of tonight's ball game. Angels and the Boston Red Sox, they've squared off four times this season, each team winning a pair. And Tim Lincecum, who will be pitching for the Angels this evening, will be facing the Red Sox for the first time since the 2013 season. He's had two career starts against him coming into tonight. And he's lost both of them, and his ERA is high in those two starts. Only a total of eight innings, but a 10.13 lifetime ERA against Boston. Last time we saw Lincecum was Sunday at Houston. The Angels were beaten in that game 13-3, to and Lincecum really struggled in that ball game. He retired only four batters, worked an inning and a third. He allowed seven hits and eight earned runs, and he gave up three home runs in that inning and a third in suffering the loss. Tim has given up nine home runs this season in only 30 innings of work. And as far as uh, how he's fared here at the Big A this season, he has had three starts at Angel Stadium, and he's gone one and two in those three starts with an ERA of 8.76. So we are just about ready to get things underway. Lincecum, the first batter he will be facing will be the leadoff man for the Red Sox, Mookie Betts. He's 10th in the league with a batting average of 305. Here comes the first pitch tonight, and that one is a little bit inside. It misses a first pitch fastball. We're underway to count 1 0. Angels have the white tops and bottoms on. Red Sox, the blue tops, gray pants. And the next pitch, that's low and outside. 2 0 the count. 81 degrees as we get things started here on this. Friday evening in Southern California. And the next delivery, that one is low again. Three straight fastballs. He's missed with all of them. Three balls, no strikes. Lincecum entering the game in 30 innings in seven starts. He's walked 15 in those 30 innings. And here's the 3-0. And he missed again. Four straight fastballs. They all missed. And Betts is on the start off the ball game. In that start that Lincecum had on Sunday against... The Astros, he walked uh, two in just an inning and a third of work. So here is Pedroia. And Lincecum's biggest problem has been that command. He just has not been able to find consistency in that strike zone. And when he has come in the strike zone, it's been right over the middle of the plate. First pitch, that one misses. Snap throw to first. And diving back to the bag goes the base runner, Mookie Betts. Rally infield tonight. The Angels look like this. G-Man Choi is playing first. Gregorio Petit plays second. You know Escobar at third with Andrelton Simmons at short. Daniel Nava in left. Mike Trout in center. Cole Calhoun in right. Carlos Perez catching. Pujols DHing Lincecum pitching, and he missed again. So that's six straight pitches out of the zone. And now Carlos Perez will walk the baseball back to Tim Lincecum. Yeah, Tim Lincecum. Talked about it. I heard an interview from Tim Linscombe the other day, and he was talking about this start here, trying to get out there and not think about mechanics, not think about is everything synced up, just thinking about how he wants to attack hitters, and there's been so much thought process. Am I doing this too quick? Am I slowing down? When you're out there thinking about mechanics, you're in big trouble. Here's a 2-0, and that one missed the fastball. So... Seven straight pitches, seven straight balls, and it's three balls, no strikes on Pedroia. Well, one thing, the fastball velocity is better tonight. It's at 88 miles an hour, every one of them. Here's the next pitch, and that missed inside. So eight straight balls thrown by Lincecum, back-to-back walks. Perez is headed back out to the mound to talk things over with Tim Lincecum. The home plate umpire, Mark Ripperker. We don't really have much of a, a book on him as far as tendencies, as far as calling balls and strikes, but really these pitches have been out of the zone. Yeah, nowhere close. 
This is one of those starts, boy, if you're Mike Socio or Charlie Nagy. And the leash for Lincecum cannot be very long at all. Here is Bogarts, who's second in the league with a batting average of 325. The pitch, and that's in there. The first strike of the night comes on pitch number nine. Owen one. Lincecum looking in for the sign. Here's the next delivery. And checking the swing on that off-speed pitch is Bogarts had missed. Tim Lincecum, a four-time All-Star, a two-time Cy Young Award winner, but has not enjoyed a whole lot of success so far in an Angel uniform. This is his eighth start with the Halos. Here's the 1-1, and that's in there, off-speed. And that's a changeup up in the strike zone at the upper side of the strike zone, and let's come gets the call. Here's the next pitch on Bogarts, and that one is up and in. He dropped a bat as that pitch was kind of following him in the batter's box. Two and two is the count on Xander Bogarts. Bogarts mentioned second in the league in batting. 330 is his batting average coming in tonight. Here's the next pitch, and that one is low, so it's a full count. So Linsicum has already walked the first two, and he's run a full count against the third batter in the inning. And I bet we're going to see. Elise Chassin get up pretty quick here. Here's the payoff pitch, and that one is waved at. He fooled him off speed right there, struck him out. Like he got him on a curveball. That's out number one. It's a big out for Lincecum, even this early in the ball game. Yeah, you look for little victories anywhere you can get them. And this is a breaking ball that's well out of the strike zone. But Bogarts chases it and goes with them out of the strike zone. And for Lincecum, a big strikeout. You look for, again, any little victory, and sometimes, obviously, the first inning is really a, can be a tough inning on any starter, but for Lincecum, his first inning, an ERA of 10.29. He's allowed eight runs in the first inning, and it gets worse in the second inning. So you're looking to try to, if you can minimize damage or limit damage. First pitch on Big Poppy takes that one, a fastball for ball one. It's 1-0. and oh. He's third in the league in batting. Tied for fourth, and Homer second in the league with 84 runs batted in. Here's the next pitch, and that one is taken a snap throw to second, diving back to the bag. Safely goes Betts, 2-0 and the count on David Ortiz. This copyrighted broadcast presented by Authority of Angels Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball. Here's the next pitch, and Ortiz lifts a high fly ball in the left field. Should be a routine play. Nava is waiting. He's under. He'll make the catch on that one. The runner at second is going to tag and advance on that one. It was hit not too far from the rim of the track there. And deep enough for uh, Mookie Betts to advance. So out number two, runners at first and third, and the batter will be Hanley Ramirez. Yeah, that ball is deep enough for Mookie Betts has great speed. You don't want to try to make that impossible play at third base. So Daniel Nava throws to second to keep the force play in line. Ramirez had the costly error last night, which allowed the Angels to get the two in the bottom of the ninth and come back and win that game. He's hitting 278, 13 homers. He's driven in 60. Here's the pitch. And the first one, it's right in there, off speed. A called strike. 
Boy, if Timmy Lincecum could get out of this first inning after it was not shaping up very good for him, those are little things that can help you start to settle in your game, and definitely making better pitches. Here's the next one, and it's a check swing. It's hit back to the mound. Lincecum should get him out, throws the first, and gets it there in time. That was a little floater that he gave Troy over there at first base. But it will get him, and the inning is over. So Lincecum, who walked the first two batters on eight pitches, gets the part at the kiosk. And the number one reason to go to Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. You could win a Chevy Camaro 2SS Coupe this Sunday. Morongo Casino Resort and Spa, conveniently located on the I-10. Less than 90 minutes from wherever you are. Morongo, good times. This is Hector Santiago, and I'm ready for baseball. Right here on AM 830 KLAA. So the Angels are just about ready to get things going here in the bottom of the first inning as Rick Porcello, sinker ball pitcher, delivers his first pitch of the night. It's lined and caught by the second baseman, Pedroia. He's not a big guy by any stretch, but he jumped up. Good vertical leap, nabs that one, and Escobar robbed of a hit to start off the Angels' first inning. Here's Cole Calhoun. Pedroia times his jump perfectly. This is a line drive that... Has an opportunity to get over his head. As you mentioned, not a very tall guy at second base, but just everything was timed perfectly. Ends up jumping up, pulling it down. Calhoun went one for four last night. He's hitting 279. Here's Porcello's delivery. And that one is right in there for a called strike. Cole Calhoun has had six hits his last 29 times up. And here's the next delivery. He swings at that one, fouls it off on the left side, back and out of play. Mike Trout waits on deck. That was interesting uh, watching what was going on in the Angels' dugout after the Angels... And uh, specifically, Tim Lincecum got out of that trouble in the top of the first inning. It certainly was. Yeah. Mike Sosha was down having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Lincecum, trying to talk to him. And Lincecum was moving his shoulder around quite a bit out there in that first inning. And after that conversation, Mike Sosha slapped him on the leg and walked away. And it seemed like you know, to be able to get out of that inning, that inning looked like it was going to had a potential to really fall apart for Lincecum, and he pulled the ship back together, and that is the veteran presence of Tim Lincecum. Don't panic. Stay within yourself and trust it, and he did, and he was able to get out of that first inning. The Red Sox first four batters are all hitting over 300, and three of the four are in the top ten in the league in batting, so they really uh, can stack it up with some weapons at the very top of their batting order. Well, not only that, but they, they all can do damage at the same, you know, they can all hit for average, but they also can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Yeah. And in the last start for Tim Lincecum, that was a problem. So they're definitely a team you can't give them a ton of free passes. They, they will take advantage of that. There's an off-speed pitch that Calhoun chases, and he misses it, struck him out. So two are gone here in the Angels. First, Mike Trout will be the next batter. Good change up right here to Cole Calhoun. Is that sinking action after all four pitches in that at bat with fastballs, two in the zone, two out of the zone, and then pulls the string. Trout's hitting 313. He's fifth in the league in batting, 19 homers, 65 driven in. And he takes the first pitch that's in there for a called strike. Porcello's history against the Angels is not real good as Trout lifts this one high in the air into medium right center. This should be a routine play camping under. Making the grab is Mookie Betts, the right fielder, and that will end the inning. Angels have a quiet bottom of the first as Porcello throws only eight. And pitched out of first inning trouble, and here's his first pitch to start off the second, and that is right in there, a first pitch curveball, and that's taken by left-handed hitting Jackie Bradley Jr. He's hitting 299, went 0 for 4 in the opener. 
And he chops this one foul over on the first base side. Around the infield tonight, the Angels look like this. G-Man Choi plays first base with Greg Petit at second. Yunel Escobar is the third baseman, and Dalton Simmons the shortstop. Daniel Nava in left, Mike Trout in center, Cole Calhoun in right. There's the pitch that missed outside. The catcher is Carlos Perez, the DH is Albert Pujols, and the pitcher is 32-year-old right-hander Tim Lincecum. Here's the next pitch, and that is on the outside corner, and out looking on the off-speed pitch is Bradley, so... Second strikeout for Lincecum. And he's starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm. He's retired the last four in a row. Here is Aaron Hill. Good sequence. Start him off with a curveball. Four straight change, three straight changeups to the last one. He, I think it's a good pitch on that outside part of the plate. Jackie Bradley Jr. did not think that pitch was a strike. So the first one on Hill. And that's in there for strike one. Here's the next pitch. That's hit into center field. It's hit well. Going back is Trout. Has a beat on it. And he'll backpedal and make the catch near the rim of the track in straightaway center. Two are gone. Hill retired. And Ryan Hannigan, the catcher, who did not see action in last night's game, will be the next batter. Hannigan's hitting 176. And he's a guy who's had trouble staying healthy the last couple seasons. Only 54 games last year. He's had some neck problems this season. And as he gets ready to dig in, Hannigan playing in just his 27th game of the season. This is game 101 for the Red Sox. Well, it goes with the territory. You get behind the plate for a few years, and those entries start popping up. And Hannigan is getting up there. Uh, he's 35 years old. Here's the 1-1. He hits this one well into left center field. Nava chasing, has a beat. He'll run it down in left center, and that's how the inning will end. That's a clean inning for Tim Lincecum, and he throws only nine pitches here in the second. The bottom of the second is next. We are scoreless at the Big A on the Angels Baseball Radio Net. We go to the bottom of the second. No score, Angels and the Red Sox. First pitch from Porcello. That one's in there for a strike. It'll be Pujols, Nava, Simmons, middle third of the batting order, and a scoreless Ball game, bottom of the second, and here's the next pitch. That's lined in the right center. It's going to fall in for a hit. The Eagles' first hit of the night, cutting the ball off is Bradley Jr. So Albert will stop it first. He had a pair of hits last night, a single his first hit up tonight. And the batter will be Daniel Nava. The first Angels hit of the game. It's brought to you by 714 Tickets. If you want to make a hit on concert, theater, or sports tickets, log on to 714tickets.com. 714 tickets call today go tonight well it seems like the month of july albert is taking that outside fastball and driving it that direction prior to that that month teams constantly were throwing him on the outer half of the plate and he was pulling off that ball trying to pull it and now he's going with it and he's starting to get hits he's obviously driving in runs going that direction everybody plays the shift on him and there's always a ton of room on that right side and Albert has really made the adjustments on that outside corner. Here's the next pitch on Nava. That's lined in the left center, and that's going to drop in. Then the ball gets away from Bradley Jr. It rolls out near the rim of the track. Albert's only going to get to third on it, and it's second with a double will be Nava. Well. Albert's not running that well. He wasn't sure to begin with whether or not the ball was going to be caught. But Bradley didn't catch it, and then the ball skipped away from him, and he had to run it all the way back near the rim of the track in center field. Boy, this had some serious spin on it. Bradley Jr., he, he had everything right. He was in the right spot of where he just pulls up short to make sure he doesn't let this ball get by. As soon as it hits the ground, it reverses and spins the opposite direction of where he was that ball that's not even his fault he was in the right spot but that had so much spin on it it 
absolutely hops away from him and gets by him. And as you mentioned, Albert, there's nothing he could do. He thought that he might even make this play, so he had to go halfway. And then once it got by him, no reason to push Albert in that particular moment. So Simmons the batter, and he takes a sinker for a called strike. The count nothing and one. It'll be a double for Nava. So runners at second and third. Nobody out. The Angels have a threat going here with Simmons at the plate, 284 average. The double by Nava is the very first extra base hit in this series. There were 18 singles last night between the two teams. And that one evens up the count. One and one on Simmons. G-Man Choi waiting on deck. Porcello set and the next pitch low and outside. Two and one. Well, you talked about it in the past. Porcello's had some really, really tough starts against the Angels throughout his career. As you mentioned, four and six with that 6.82 ERA and 13 starts against the Angels. He had a start back in the 2013 season here at the Big A where he gave up nine runs in two-thirds of an inning. There's a chopper that's hit to the shortstop. Only one play for Bogarts. It'll get Simmons. 6-3 on the ground out. Coming in and scoring is Albert from third. Nava stays at second. Angels have a 1-0 lead. A great read right there by Albert. A contact play was on, and Albert takes off. This ball's not hit hard enough to Bogarts to get Albert at the plate. Albert gets a good jump, scores easily. So the Angels have scored three runs so far in this series and haven't had an RBI hit yet in the series. RBI ground out there for Simmons. You'll take them however you get them, I guess. <laughs> yes. Here's Choi batting. First pitch, that's high and away. G-Man Choi, one of the angel hitters in the lineup who had never faced Porcello. And the other one uh, could end up batting in this inning as well. It's Gregorio Petit, the nine-hole hitter. And G-Man Choi is the one that scored the winning run from second base on last night's game. And that throw from Hanley Ramirez just airmailed Sandy Leone, the catcher, nowhere close. Fired it to the backstop. Mike Trout and G-Man Choi. Here's the next pitch, and this is grounded on the right side. It'll get the runner to third. The throw by Petroya easily gets Choi. So that's the second out, 4-3 on the ground out. Now that the runner at third base, and we'll see what Carlos Perez can do. He came in last night in the ninth inning as a pinch hitter and struck out. Up there as a pinch bunter. Three attempts at it and did not get it done. So Perez, who's hitting 225 homers, 25 driven in, has a chance to get an RBI here. Need the two out, hit the pitch, and that one is low and outside, a sinker missed. We talked about all the averages in the month of July, and there's obviously a lot of guys in this Angel lineup that have had great months of July. Carlos Perez, 375 average, pair of home runs and nine RBIs driven in for Perez this month. And there's a shot right up the middle, and that's an RBI hit for him here in July. Scoring is Nava, 2-0 Angels. Well, ever since Carlos Perez has come back from AAA, it's a different swing. And this is just a fastball right down the middle of the plate, and he hits it right back where it came from and drives in the second run for the Angels. The Angels now lead this game 2 to nothing. Gregorio Petit will be the next batter. Petit in the opener, win one for three. Has a little three-game hitting streak coming into play tonight. And the first pitch to him, he fouls it off over on the right side for strike one. Texas continues to lead their ball game. They're playing Kansas City tonight. They're up comfortably 8-3 in the top of the eighth. Detroit 
clobbered the Astros tonight. 14 to 6 was the final on that one. Seattle, they were hammered by the Cubs today at Wrigley 12 to 1. A's were beaten in Cleveland, so been kind of a rough go for the AL West at the moment, although both the Angels and Rangers leading in their respective games. One ball, one strike to count here on Petit. Marcello's pitch chopped on the right side. Pedroia chases, stops it, and throws and gets Petit. One second baseman retires another. That'll end the inning. The Angels do come up with a pair here in the bottom of the second and have a 2 0 lead as we go to the third on the Angels. No runs, no hits for the Red Sox. Brock Holt is their leadoff man in this inning. He's the number nine hitter. He bats left handed. He takes the first pitch in there. Nothing and one. Holt is hitting 257. And the next pitch, that's low. 1 and 1 to count. Brock Holt went one for three last night. He hit out of the nine hole, and that pitch is low. In that lineup last night for the Red Sox, and they've changed it a little bit tonight with uh, Hill and Hannigan each in the lineup. They were not in the lineup last night. Here's a one hopper. Nice stop by Choi. Smothers it and easily beats Holt to the bag. Unassisted put out, and Lincecum has now set down the last seven batters in a row. Top of the batting order, Mookie Betts will bet. But in the Boston lineup last night, every single hitter in their lineup last night played for the Red Sox last season. And in their lineup tonight, uh, eight of the nine were with them a year ago. The only newcomer, so to speak, is Aaron Hill, and they got him uh, just a a couple weeks ago in a deal with the Milwaukee Brewers. There's a pitch in there for strike one. Nothing in one to count. Yeah, that's the best fastball of the night for Lentz. Come at 89. Here's the next pitch. And that's fouled back. Another one at 89 on the fastball. So nothing in two to count. Mookie Betts walked on four pitches leading off the ball game. And then Lincecum walked the next batter, Pedroia, on four pitches. And then the first pitch he threw to the third batter in the first inning, Bogarts missed. So that was nine straight pitches that missed for Lincecum. But then things clicked in. He ended up striking out Bogarts. He got Ortiz in the first inning on a routine fly ball and got Hanley Ramirez on a comebacker and retired seven straight. Here's the pitch outside. Took something off the fastball there. And it's two and two. And after the last few starts that Tim Linscombe's had, you just had that feel like, uh-oh, here we go again. And he was able to fight his way through that first inning and much better second inning and already a quick out. So it's a full count here on Betts. The payoff delivery. He walked him. Left speed pitch missed high. So second time Betts has walked. They have a one out base runner. And Pedroia will be the batter. Third walk issued by Lincecum. The top of the third inning. It's being presented this evening by Ballast Point Brewing and Spirits. Toss over to first, diving back to the bag goes the base runner Mookie Betts. Betts 16 stolen bases this year. And he has got a massive lead at first base. Mookie Betts only 23 years old and he can run but not on the next pitch and a missed inside on Pedroia. Shockingly Dustin Pedroia 17 ground ball double plays he's hit into. Second in the league in that department. You know, Escobar is hit into the most double plays. There goes Betts, pitches high, throw down a second, and the ball skips away. Batit was on the receiving end of the throw, but never came up with that throw cleanly, and that'll be a stolen base for Betts' 17th of the year. 
Uh, picks a good pitch to run on. He gets a breaking ball from Lincecum, and this ball is up. And a very good throw from Carlos Perez, all things considered. A breaking ball, and Lincecum is not quick to home plate. And that, if Petit is able to hold on to that, has been a fairly close play. There's a pitch that's inside, off speed delivery there. So now it's 3 0 on Pedroia. Betts, who's at second, walked in the inning, and Lincecum has gotten behind the next batter. Here's the next pitch, and that missed inside. So Lincecum facing Betts and Pedroia for the second time in this game has walked each of them twice already in the early going. And the batter now will be Bogarts. You look at the pitch breakdown, 42 pitches for Lincecum, and only 17 of the 42 have been strikes. Well, that means he's going to strike out Bogarts right here and then get Big Poppy to fly out to Daniel Nava. This inning will be over here in just a minute. Continue with the pattern. Yes. Yep. Here's the pitch, and that is high. A fastball misses. Well, we talked about it in that first inning. You can only survive these kind of innings so many times against the Red Sox. If you continually put free passes on and give them opportunities, they will cash them in at some point. Yep. Had the best offense in baseball this season. There's another one that misses, and that was off speed. And I don't know where how this one misses. This is a curveball that starts about belt high. It's not where you catch it. It's where it crosses the plate. It looks like it crosses the plate right down the middle, right at the knees. Runners are going now. A throw to third, and applying the tag is Escobar. So the Red Sox tried to be aggressive on the bases there, and it backfires. And, boy, that's a gift out right there. Yeah, that is bad, bad base running right there by the Red Sox. This is a standpoint. Mookie Betts can score from second base easily, and he just gets too aggressive. Soon as Andrelton Simmons, who was right behind him, clears, he takes off, and then Scum does a little inside turn, and that is a gift out. So it's 2-0 and on Bogarts. Next delivery is on the outside corner. Curveball there. It's two and one. When the Angels bat in the bottom of the third, up two nothing. Top of the batting order: Escobar, Calhoun, and Trout against Porcello. Here's the next pitch. That's lined into right center. That's going to drop in, and it's going to bounce all the way out to the wall. Headed for third base is Pedroia. He is going to be waved home. Throw to the plate. He is safe, and ending up at third base is Bogarts, and that cuts the. Angel lead down to two to one. Well, perfectly placed by Bogarts. This is a fastball that looks like it's out over the heart of the plate. And he splits the gap perfectly. Mike Trot cannot get to this ball. And the throw from Petit, boy, it was close. And had Carlos Perez was able to hold on to that ball. I think it, it would have been a play at the plate. But this is a one hopper to Perez that he's unable to pick up and make the tag. He drops the ball. So here's David Ortiz with that runner at third, two outs. He takes the first one off speed for ball one. They'll give Bogarts a double on that one and a run batted in. That's his 25th double of the year. That makes that pickoff huge. Yep. Big Poppy flied out his first time up last night. He was one for two. And there's ball two on him. Two balls and no strikes. So the first Red Sox hit of the night, the double by Bogarts uh, driving in to Droya. Next pitch. That's a flare and a left, and that's going to tie up the ball game. It'll drop in. Navo will fire it back to the infield, but David Ortiz... Goes the opposite way with a two-out RBI hit. It's a 2-2 ball game. Well, this is a great at-bat by David Ortiz. 
ahead in the count 2-0, and oh, and this is a good changeup down and away by Lincecum, and Ortiz doesn't try to do anything but just flip this ball into left field. And that's exactly what he does. Hits it like he throws it and stays right on it. And picks up his 85th RBI. A pitch in there for a strike on Ramirez. So after the Angels got the two in the bottom of the second, the Red Sox have come right back to match it with two here in the top of the third. Walks hurting Lincecum in this inning. The walk to Betts and the walk to Pedroia. One of those two scoring in the inning. One ball, one strike on Hanley Ramirez. Here's the next pitch, and that's a little bit inside and missed. Coming into this game, Hanley Ramirez, the most at bats against Lincecum of anyone in this Red Sox lineup. 28 at bats now. Nine for 28. Next pitch just missed on Ramirez. So Lincecum, who has been behind the hitters all night long, is behind here three and one on Ramirez. 53 pitches, and 32 of them have been out of the strike zone. Here's the three one, and that is low. Another walk. So that's five walks already here. Three in this inning, two in the first inning. And Charlie Nagy, the Angels pitching coach, is going to head out and talk things over with Lincecum. Fans, want to remind you, Simpson Chevrolet is having a summer sales event where you can get low payments and special financing. At Simpson Chevrolet in Garden Grove and Irvine, you will always find the right vehicle at the right price. Visit them online at SimpsonGM.com. Mark Ripperker, the home plate umpire out there to break up the meeting. And I'm kind of shocked that the Angels don't have any action yet in that bullpen. Again, we, we talked about it in the first inning. The, the leash for Lensicum cannot be that long. His track record this season has not been that great. Five walks tonight, the most he's walked in any start this season. And here's the next pitch. It's popped into very shallow right center. Trout is going to call everyone off, and they'll make the grab, and the inning is over. But a pair of runs for the Red Sox. They had a pair of walks, a pair of hits. And venture to the bottom of the third inning. Angels two runs, three hits. Red Sox two runs, two hits. Escobar is the batter, and the first pitch on Yunel. He takes it for a strike from Rick Porcello. Escobar ripped the ball his first time up, but lined out to Dustin Pedroia, the second baseman. Here's the next pitch on the Angels' leadoff man, and that is a breaking ball right in there for a called strike. Slow curveball right there from Porcello. Yeah, 71 miles an hour. Here's the 0-2. Uh, swing and a miss, and he went after him with the fastball, struck him out. That's his second strikeout. The other one came against Cole Calhoun. He'll be the batter. And that is a good sequence right there from Porcello. Fastball, curveball, finishes him up with an elevated fastball that at 92 miles an hour. Right, Escobar on his way back breaks his bat and actually just slides his bat on top of the Angels dugout into the seats. He didn't want anything to do with that bat anymore. He was done with it. Yep. So here's Cole Calhoun taking the first pitch. That's low and inside. Porcello has been one of the best control pitchers in the American League this season. In fact, second in the AL as far as fewest walks per nine innings. And he's been throwing strikes so far tonight. Twice as many strikes as balls in his 27 pitches. 18 to 9 the 
break down strikes and balls and the next pitch and that one is right in there called strike 101 the count Calhoun Nava and Choi the three batters hitting left-handed against Porcello and the next pitch that one's low Marcelo a year ago was 9 and 15. This year, 13 and 2. He's had good run support this season. Time called. Calhoun backs out of the box. And that always helps. Last start on Sunday, the Red Sox scored eight runs for him and a win against Minnesota. And there's a 2 1 pitch, a slow one at 80 miles per hour, waved at and missed. Good changeup. Talking with Boston Red Sox manager John Farrell before the game, talking about run support. We're talking about. I was telling him about how Hector Santiago, um, John Farrell, a former pitcher, former Halo, how sometimes you just get in that slot of either the positive side or the negative side. And I was talking to him about how Hector Santiago is in that real positive slot right now. A lot of run support, a lot of runs being scored for him. And Matt Shoemaker follows him on the next day and getting zero runs. And he's talking about Porcello, how the offense has been there for him. And David Price, it's been a little bit more of a struggle for David Price to get the runs. But it seems like there's always somebody in that slot in both of them. Yeah. Here's the 3-2, and that's fouled off by Cole Calhoun near the Red Sox on deck circle. The last 14 starts coming into tonight for Porcello. The Red Sox have scored at least four runs in every single one of those 14 starts. There you go. So you're going to rack up some victories when that happens, and he, and he has. Well, and you still, it, it does, we talk about it a ton, run support makes you a different pitcher. It allows you the freedom to kind of relax and settle into your game. There's a one hopper hit right on the left side. It's fielded there by Bogarts, the shortstop. They had the third baseman Hill on the right side infield shift but kept the shortstop in place and that's where Calhoun hits it for the second out. Well fans the bottom of the third inning is brought to you by your Southern California Chevy dealer. Find a great deal on select 2016 vehicles at the Chevy summer sale down. Visit your Southern California Chevy dealer today. So here is Trout who's flied out his only time up. And here's the pitch on Mike. He takes that one a little bit outside. Ball one. We talk about it a lot in Hector Santiago starts. When you do get those run support, it allows, allows you to relax. And you feel like your margin for error, you have a lot of wiggle room. And when you give pitchers, you ask a closer, a closer would obviously rather come into a game with a three-run lead instead of a one-run lead. And that's just because it gives you the opportunity for a little wiggle. There's Trout ripping one, and it's caught by the third baseman, Aaron Hill. And the inning is over. The Angels have hit some balls hard, but... Dot com slash Lexus Diamond Club. Hi, this is Cole Calhoun. Nothing beats baseball on the radio. AM 830 KLAA. Tim Lincecum's first delivery miss for a ball on Aaron Hill and the 1-0 pitch, and that one misses ball two. It's two balls, no strikes. Hill, Hannigan, and Holt. Bottom third of the batting order in a 2-2 game as we start the fourth. There's one in there, a fastball called strike. The two Boston runs came last inning. Here comes the next pitch. That's hit sharply but foul over on the left side. Let's pause for stations to identify themselves on the Angels Baseball Radio Network. This is 2016 Angels Baseball on Angels Radio AMA 30 KLAA. Orange County, Los Angeles and Inland Empire. 
Here's the 2-2 on Aaron Hill, and he chops it by the mound, and that's going to skip through into center field. That'll be a leadoff hit. Since the Red Sox acquired Hill, he hasn't hit that much. That's just his second hit in his last 13 times up. This ball game uh, for Aaron Hill just is ninth with Boston. He was hitting 179 for them coming into the game. Gone six for 30 now since they got him. Here's the pitch. And that is a strike on the outside corner. Hannigan lined out to left fielder Daniel Nava's first time up. Here's the pitch, and that's a little bit low. One ball, one strike. That game in Texas has gone final. The Rangers beat the Royals 8-3 to tonight. And the second straight against Kansas City. And that's the 60th win of the year for the Texas Rangers. Their record is 60-44. and 44. They're the first team in the AL to win 60 games. National League, Cubs have won 61. The Nationals have won 60. And the Giants, if they win tonight, they would win their 60th of the year. Here's the pitch. That's bounce foul on the left side. And the count level 2-2 two and two on Hannigan. Meantime, the Kansas City Royals continue to struggle on the road. Their road record now is 17 and 34. The defending World Series champs. Twice as many road losses as road wins. Here's the 2-2. That's high. So the fastball moves the count to 3-2 and two on Hannigan. A couple of veterans matching up here. Hannigan, 35. Tim Winsicum, 32 years old. There goes the runner. 3-2 pitch. That's ball four. And that's another walk. The sixth allowed by Winsicum. And two are on with nobody out. Holt will be the batter. We'll see how they play it here with the nine-hole hitter coming up to the plate. Looks like the Angels are going to get some action in that bullpen. I gotta believe it's gonna be Chessine. And here's the pitch, no sign of a bun, and swinging away, fouling that one off over on the first base side is Brock Holt. So it's no balls, one strike on him. And it is Chassin. The most walks Lincecum has ever had in a game, seven. And the uh, last time he did that was in 2013. And there's a ball bounced through on the right side. That's going to be a base hit. The lead runner, Hill, will stop at third. But they have the bases loaded and nobody out, and they'll flip it to the top of the batting order now, Mookie Betts. Charlie Nagy on his way out. Have a meeting with Tim Lincecum. Fans, the top of the fourth inning is brought to you by Captain Morgan. Enjoy a Captain Morgan and Cola. Please drink responsibly. So the meeting uh, going on, Angels pitching coach. And the home plate umpire, Mark Ripperker is headed out to the mound to break things up. Mookie Betts will be the batter. Infield has been brought in. Lincecum is really on some thin ice right now here in this ballgame. Here's the pitch, and that one is low and inside. 
It's a 2-2 game. But right now, the Red Sox have things working in their favor. Bases loaded, nobody out. This will be Lincecum's 70th pitch of the night. And that one misses low, and he's behind 2-0. Well, he's got to throw bets some strikes here. A walk with force and a run. And that ball strike ratio is not good at all. Here's the next pitch, and that's low and inside. And now he really has to come in with a strike, but you don't want to groove one with the bases loaded. 3-0 and is the count. Yeah, this is probably going to be Linscombe's last hitter right here. He's ready, and the 3-0 pitch just got a piece of the outside corner with a fastball. 3-1. Lincecum walked three last inning, and he's walked two of the three that he's faced this inning. And the 3-1 pitch. Lifted in the air in the center field. Trout's got to run back to catch it. It's going to be caught, but it's deep enough to get the runner in. Trout will make the grab. Two runners will tag in advance. Coming in and scoring on the sack fly will be Hill. And the Red Sox have their first lead of the night. They're up 3-2. Well, real good at bat right there by Mookie Betts. Definitely had count leverage. And when you got count leverage, you, you hunt certain things. And you talk with hitting coach Chili Davis. That's the one thing he preaches. When you have count leverage, it's a small little window you look for. What does the at bat call for? What do I need to do here? Look for something up. Got it. Got a fastball up. And... Push Mike Trout far enough away to drive in the run. So Pedroia will be the batter. And here's the first pitch that's in there. First pitch fastball. That term you referenced a few times, count leverage. That's a new one for me. Where'd you dig that one up? I don't know, Terry. It's, I guess talking with Chili today. There you <laughs> go. We're down there talking. Here's the 0 1, and that one a little bit outside. One ball, one strike. And we were talking. About that thing, he said, hey, when my guys, I, I guess it chili planted in my head, when we have count leverage, I tell these guys to be, have a real small window that you look for. Here's a ground ball, hit the short, should be a double play. Second for one, relay to first, it is a double play. So Pedroia, who's second in the league in doing just that, does it again. And boy, the Angels able to survive most of the inning there. To Boston as the Angels bat bottom of the fourth. Albert Pujols, the first batter, and the first pitch. That's off speed, but in there on the outside corner, it's nothing in one. Albert is singled and scored. He'll be fouled by Nava and Simmons. Marcelo working with his first lead of the night, and there's a pop that's going to clear the left side of the infield and drop into left center for another hit. Albert had two last night, two more tonight. Broke his bat on that one, but he's the tying run at first base to lead off the inning, and here's Nava. Well, Albert in his first at bat got a fastball on that outside part of the plate and went to right field with it. This one is on the inside part of the plate little two-seamer, little sinker in, breaks the bat, but Albert muscles it out into left field. So Nava, who doubled and scored back in the bottom of the second, will get ready for his second at bat of the evening. Here it comes, the first pitch right in there for a called strike. Want to remind you, every fan matters when the Angels take on the Oakland A's on Tuesday night, next Tuesday, 7.05 first pitch. Fans in attendance receive an Angel soccer scarf. It's courtesy of Micro Semi. While supplies last, visit angels.com or call 714 Angels to purchase your tickets today. And here's the pitch. That's foul back. Noticed earlier tonight on the TV side, Gooby was wearing the Angel soccer scarf. And he also had on earlier tonight the Angels umbrella hat. So he's been in costume mode tonight. He has been. Do you want something to be worn? Gooby's your guy. <laughs> uh, he will flash the apparel. Yes, he will. 0-2 is the count on Nava, who 
backs out of the box time called. Here's the pitch, and that's lifted in the air down the left field side. That one is pushing foul back and out of play. Mentioned the uh, pitch before Nava backed out of the box time called. There's been a lot of discussion around Major League Baseball this season that the umpires are not really enforcing batters staying in the box the way the speed-up rules were supposed to be implemented. And actually, the time of games this year has risen from a year ago. Wow. Even with the clock and everything yep. all in play. Yep. Wow. Slightly longer games this year than last year. And last year uh, they spiked lower from 2014. And here's the next pitch lifted in the air in the left center field. Chasing hard is Bradley, and he runs that one down. Boy, that was a nice running catch. He can go get him out there in center. And he went way over to left center field to run that one down in the gap, and that's the first down. Well, Nama's last at bat, he was unable to come up with the ball, almost in the same vicinity, but this time he shifts over a little bit more towards the left field and is able to run this one down. And that one in the back in the second inning, it had some serious spin, and it gets by him. That set that whole third inning in play, actually the second inning in play when the Angels scored two. So here's Simmons, who's driven in a run with a ground out, and he takes that pitch on the outside corner, off speed of curveball for strike one. It's 3-2 Boston, bottom of the fourth. Here's the next pitch on Simmons. That's low, blocked by Hannigan. Uh, mentioning the uh, time of games, they're running a little bit longer this year than last year. And baseball commissioner Rob Manfred, again for the second time uh, this month, was talking the other day about maybe some rule changes looking ahead in Major League Baseball. Here's the pitch, and this one is bounced by the mound, but out near second. They flip the second for one, relay to first will double up Simmons. And that's how the inning will end. So the Angels hit into a twin killing here. And that'll wrap things up in the bottom of the fourth. The fifth is the run driven in a run and struck out. Here's the first pitch. And that one is right in there for strike one. He gave him a first pitch curveball. Three runs, four hits for Boston. Two runs, four hits for the Angels. And the next pitch lifted in the air in the right center field. Calhoun has a bead on it. And in meeting him right center, he'll put that one away for the first out. David Ortiz will be the next batter. And picking up where we left off last inning about the uh, baseball commissioner, Rob Manfred. One of the things that he's been saying now several times, Mark, uh, this month is that there should be a limit on uh, pitching changes in an inning. And if a team brings in a pitcher, a reliever, that that reliever would have to stay in the game maybe to face more than just one hitter when you see managers kind of jockeying their bullpen in certain innings. Here's one that's popped up behind the mound. Let's see who's going to call for it. It'll be Simmons and... He comes over. He was playing on the right side with the shift on. He'll make the catch, and that's the second out. Two quick outs. Big Poppy retired. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it, you always look to try to improve and try to shorten game. That's the big thing with baseball now with the commercial breaks that are paying the bills. You, you've got to try to do things in between. And obviously last year that was a big point that they kept everybody in the batter's box. You could have, you had to have at least one foot in the batter's box, and that has disappeared. So I wouldn't be shocked if that comes back into play. And then you're right. As far as a guy being out there, he's probably, you know, that is not a bad idea that you got to go through more than one hitter. You've got the specialists that are out there. and There's a pitch that's in there for a strike. If something like that was implemented, you just kind of wonder uh, where would you draw the line? A, a guy comes in, he has to face 
at least two hitters, at least three hitters. Yeah. Right now, there's no limitations. You can have a pitcher come in to face one hitter. You can bring in a reliever. He can face one hitter. You can bring in another reliever and so on and so forth. But uh, that is being tossed around, that theory now of making relief pitchers face more than one batter in an inning. Well, we've seen it this year. We've seen not only the Angels, but other teams use four guys to get three outs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've seen it. There's one hit hard but foul down the left side back and out of play. It's nothing and two on Hanley Ramirez. Yeah, there's, I think there's some wiggle room in there for baseball to figure that out. And they have the clock involved, and I do like the clock. Here's the next pitch, and that one is low. You now, talking to Mike Socia about that, maybe forcing relievers to face more than one batter in a relief appearance, and he doesn't like that rule. He, he says that, you know, that's changing game strategy, and uh, he's not in favor of that, but we'll see where all that might take us after the season. Here's the pitch, and a swing and a foul tip. It's held by Perez, struck him out. Ramirez retires, and Lincecum has... So the Angels' G-Man Choi will lead off the bottom of the fifth. It's 3-2 Boston for Sello's first pitch, and Choi takes that one a little bit low. One ball, no strikes. Choi grounded out to Pedroia's first time up. Perez and Petit, the rest of the bottom third of the batting order, will follow. And here's the next one on the South Korean. He takes that one for a called strike. One and one. We'll check out the Jeep out of town scoreboard on this Friday in just a moment. Behind the wheel of a Jeep vehicle, there is no place you can't roam. Find your summer of adventure with great deals during the summer of Jeep. And here's the one one. A swing and a miss. Fastball. Sinker fooled him right there. In the AL. It was Detroit beating up on the Astros tonight in the Motor City. The final there was 14-6 Tigers. Texas won at home. They beat the Royals 8-3. Odor, a pair of home runs in that Texas win. And on the 1-2 delivery, that one there freezes Choi. Struck him out on a sinker, and that is the first out. Strikeout in the game, number three for Rick Porcello. And Carlos Perez will be the batter. Earlier today in Chicago, Seattle lost to the Cubs at Wrigley 12-1. Lester over Iwakuma. Back to the American League. Toronto beat Baltimore 6-5. It was Tampa Bay winning at home. They beat the Yankees 5-1. There's a pitch a little bit low. Bottom of the 11th, White Sox and Twins are 1-1. We'll check out the National League in just a moment. We do have a number of finals in the NL. 1-0 on Perez, taken for a strike on the outside corner. Rockies beat the Mets in New York 6-1. Tyler Chatwood goes to 10-6 with that victory for Colorado, former Angel. St. Louis won in Miami 11-6. Atlanta beat Philadelphia 2-1. Milwaukee a 3-1 win at home over Pittsburgh. They're in the fourth. Dodgers up 2-0 against Arizona in the fourth. Giants 1-0 lead against Washington. There's one low and outside, and the Reds got four in the first inning in San Diego and lead that game 4-0 against the Padres as they head to the second. In our game, it's 3-2 Boston. Angels batting here in the bottom of the fifth, and Perez takes that sinker for a strike, 2-2. Two and two. Carlos Perez batting in our fantasy inning sweepstakes inning. We'll announce... Tonight's contestant after the pitch, and it's fouled off on the right side. I want to congratulate Patty Craig of Ontario. She's our contestant this evening in the Fantasy Inning Sweepstakes. If any Angel batter gets a hit in this inning, Patty Craig of Ontario wins a two-night stay, one round of golf, dinner for two at the Fantasy Springs Resort Casino located in the Palm Springs area. We'll let you know how you can be a contestant after the 2-2 delivery, and it's fouled back to the screen. The count remains even. If you'd like to sign up to be a contestant in the fantasy inning sweepstakes like tonight's contestant, Patty Craig of Ontario, just text the words AM830FANTASY 
to 50352. Maybe you'll be our next lucky contestant. Perez checking his batting gloves as he gets positioned in the box. Porcello is ready. And here comes the 2 2 on the Angel catcher. He looks it over and missed outside a sinker, and it's 3 and 2. Petit will be the next batter. Angels had a 2 0 lead, but trail it's 3 2 at the moment. We're in the bottom of the fifth with. One out, no one on. A full count here on Carlos Perez. The payoff pitch fouls another one off. So this has been a long matchup right here. Seven pitch at bat right now for Carlos Perez. And as this game has progressed, Rick Porcello has gotten better and better. And if that goes right along with kind of what the data tells you, innings one through three, 4.20 ERA. 3-2 once again, hit foul right over by the Angels' dugout, right into the dugout. At 4.20 ERA, and then he's one through three with a hitters hitting 276 against him, and he's four through six, a 2.48 ERA. So he settles into his game, and it looks like that is occurring. He set down seven of the last eight. Again, a 3-2 delivery. It's hit right to the shortstop. Down to a knee to field it is Bogart. And Perez will be an easy out. Two up, two away. Gregorio Petit will be the next batter. Want to remind Angel fans, the bottom of the fifth inning is being brought to you this evening by Muscle Maker Grill and Fresca's Authentic Mexican Kitchen. Visit their Orange County locations, including their new spot right here at the Big A. So Petit at the plate, 0 for 1 night, grounded out to second his first time up. Here's the first pitch, and that's a first pitch curveball that he takes for ball one. When you look at Rick Purcell's splits this year, boy, home and road. On the road, 3 and 2 with a 4.02 ERA. At home, 10 and 0 this year at Fenway with a 3.21. The pitch was in there. The 60th pitch of the night for Porcello, so his pitch count very manageable here with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. One and one on Petit, and the next delivery, he chops one softly on the left side. The third baseman Hill has it. He'll throw out Petit, and the Angels have a quiet bottom of the fifth. So that is nine of the last. This is Joe Smith. You can't beat baseball on the radio. AM 830 KLAA. Tim Lincecum on the mound as we go to the sixth inning. His first pitch on Jackie Bradley Jr. Missed for ball one. Here's the 1-0. That's right in there. Angels have you know, at least just seen loosening up in the bullpen. And here's the 1-1 pitch. That's a little low and inside. Lincecum's had to grind it out here tonight. But he's kept the Angels in the ball game and he's working here in the Sixth inning. Here's the 2 1 pitch that's lifted high and it's hit deep to right field. Going back is Cole Calhoun and that one is gone. Jackie Bradley Jr. leads off the sixth inning with his 17th home run of the season. And the Red Sox add on. It's now 4 to 2. Boy, this is a changeup. From Tim Lincecum stays up in the zone, and Jackie Bradley Jr. gets underneath it. It's to the short part of the porch, and Mike Sosha is on his way out. But this one is a hanger that Jackie Bradley Jr. gets fully extended. Cole Calhoun, Max Effort, almost jumps into the stance trying to pull this one back. But tough night for Tim Lincecum. So he will be lifted. Lincecum officially goes five innings tonight. Can't win it. And at the moment on the hook for a loss, but still a lot of baseball left. Listening to Angels Baseball on AM 830 KLAA. New pitcher for the Angels is Yolis Chassin. His first pitch on Aaron Hill. It's a comebacker. Stopped by Chassin. And then the little flip to the first baseman, G-Man Choi. One pitch, one out. 
On the bouncer back to the mound, the batter will be Ryan Hannigan, the catcher. Angels call to the bullpen. It's brought to you by Farmer John. When the weather heats up, it's time to heat up the grill. So pick up some Farmer John beef franks from your local grocery store today. Lincecum's numbers, five innings, five hits, four runs earned, six walks, three strikeouts. He allowed a home run. There's the pitch on Hannigan, and that one is a first pitch fastball to misses inside. There's the next delivery. That one is low. Mentioning the home run allowed by Lincecum, and that came against the final batter that he faced tonight. Lincecum did not allow any home runs in his first start with the Angels on the 18th of June. And then every start after that one, including tonight, he's given up at least one home run. Ten home runs allowed by Lincecum in just 35 innings. Yeah. Tonight, once again, boy, just. There's a pitch that's on the outside corner. And he made big pitches. I mean, if we look at the scoreboard, it's just a four to two game. This game could have been blown open by the Red Sox. Six walks in five innings is your. your Walking the tightrope right there, and he was able to make some big pitches and keep this game somewhat close. But it's just been a consistent pattern, unfortunately, for him. So the count's full here on Hannigan. Here's the next pitch, and that is a called third strike off speed pitch. Frozen struck him out looking to her gone. Good slider right here by Chassin on that outside corner. Perfectly placed. Chassin has done a marvelous job in that Angels bullpen. He has been a really perfect in a game like this where the Angels do need to absorb some innings and depending on how the game, the pattern of the game continues. But he's done a nice job of doing, coming into these games and keeping the game right where it's supposed to be and does not allow any more damage. Allowing the Angels' offense to climb back in them. Yeah, he's pitched a lot better out of the bullpen than he did when he was starting, and of course he lost his spot in the rotation. One on one is the count on Brock Holt. It's a 4-2 Red Sox lead here in the sixth, and the next pitch. It's a little bit low. The top of the sixth inning being brought to you this evening by Hyundai. Imagine if you had 10 years or 100,000 miles before you were out of a car warranty. That's Hyundai. Visit your local dealer or buy Hyundai.com. 2 1 pitch. That's on the outside part of the plate. Off speed in there. 2 and 2. The Angels bat in the bottom of the sixth. Top of the batting order against Porcello. That means Escobar, Calhoun, and Trout. There's the next pitch, and that one misses, so the count's full at fastball. Missed low, three and two. Chassin is ready, the payoff delivery. Smacked foul over on the right side. Fans, don't forget every moment matters this summer. It's time to create memories with the family. Angels baseball is great family fun for everyone. For only $44, get four tickets, four hot dogs, and four soft drinks with the Friends and Family Fun Pack. Visit angels.com slash fun pack for more info. So here's the 3-2. Hit sharply, but right at Troy. He'll solo to the bag. Holt's an easy out, unassisted play, and Chassin comes in and retires all three. But a run earlier in the inning on the leadoff home run by Bradley. That was three game matters. Angels Radio, AM, 830, KLAA. Yunel Escobar will be the first batter up for the Angels. Bottom of the six we go. It's 4 2 Boston. Marcelo's first delivery. It's chopped foul. Right over by the Angels dugout. The bottom of the sixth. It's being brought to you tonight by Valvoline Instant Oil Change. So fast and easy. You don't need to get out of your car. 
Go to SoCalOilChange.com to save money on your next oil change. Escobar has an eight-game hitting streak on the line, 0 for 2 tonight. And here's the next pitch. She cuts it, this one, and pops it in the air. Shallow right field coming in his bets. He'll call everyone off. Both Ramirez and Pedroia make the grab on that one. And shallow right near the line for the first out. One away. Well, as we sit here in the bottom of the sixth inning, Angels trailing 4-2. to two. The score update is brought to you by Experian. Get serious about your credit by visiting Experian.com. Well, the Angel bats were quiet last night, although the Angels snuck out a 2-1 win. Tonight, only two runs. Porcello has been pitching well, and he's working with a two-run lead. It's 4-2 Boston here in the bottom of the six. Calhoun, the batter, 0 for 2 night. First pitch, takes it low and inside. Look at that win last night. Angels seven straight wins here at the Big A. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Grounded sharply. A foul ball over on the right side. After this ball game tonight, just two more games left in July. Angels have already. Clinched a winning month for the first time this season. The Angels are 14 and 9 here in July. Last year in August, that was when the Angels really had a bad month. And uh, hopefully, uh, August of 2016 will be a lot better in August of 2015. There's one low. Two and one to count on Cole Calhoun. Yeah, that did the Angels in last year, especially you see. <laughs> Where the Angels just missed the postseason. The month of August really took them down, but the month of June has been the real bad month for the Angels this year. Here's a shot that's going to drop in front of Bradley out there in center field. Cole Calhoun gets his first hit of the night. So that'll bring up Trout. It'll be the tying run. Mike's had an 0 for 2 night. Coming into the ball game, Trout 286 average against Porcello with a homer against him. Angels have a few hitters in the lineup who have hit long balls in the past against Porcello. Calhoun, Poolholz, and Trout. The Angels have had only one home run in the last four games, and so far, uh, none tonight. Here's the pitch. That's low and outside. Hey, look at Mike Trout in this month. Only two home runs for Mike Trout during the month of July. You know, the other day you were talking about C.J. Crone, who we haven't seen in a long time, although he did play some July games, but he had a few home runs in July before the injury. Yeah, it's five home runs, 17 RBIs. There's Trout lifting one in the air down the right field side. It's tight to the line, a foul ball. That was nearly a home run, but just pushed a little bit foul the opposite way. If we're in Fenway, that might have curved right around Pesky's pole out there in Fenway Park. But about less than 300 feet away. I almost felt a New England accent coming on you there, but there's still time in this series. Oh, plenty of time. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's a shot that's hit into center field, but it's going to hang up. Not too deep as it turns out off the end of the bat, and Bradley will make the catch on that one. Trout and easy out. Two are gone. Who holds the next batter? This fastball at 92, boy, has just enough movement in on Mike Trout to take it right off the barrel of the bat. Turns into an easy out. And Rick Porcello, as we talked about, has really gotten stronger and stronger as this game's progressed. Really has got a good feel for that two-seamer. It's retired 11 of the last 13. 
Albert's had a two-hit night. We'll see what he does his third at bat against Porcello. And here's the first pitch. That's right in there, a sinker called strike. Follow Angels Baseball live with the MLB.com at bat app. Game day live, game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. Next pitch, this is pop back foul, not far from our booth. It'll land back in the seats below. 0 oh 2 the count. Each team with five hits. The Red Sox have a 4 2 lead. The Angels are batting in the bottom of the sixth. Solo at 72 pitches, and he's been a strike thrower tonight. He's known for that. 51 of the 72 pitches have been strikes. Hasn't walked the batter. Look at Porcello's stuff. It's not overpowering, but he puts it in really good spots. It's got movement. Here's one that's bounced foul over on the left side, and the count, no balls and two strikes. And it just goes to show you once again how velocity is great. And if you got it, that's tremendous. If you don't, it's all about location, where you're able to put that. That is the most important thing, and movement is second. Velocity is third. So if you can put the ball where you want, it doesn't matter. We see it with Jared Weaver. Not overpowering like he used to be, but he's able, the days he's able to spot that fastball, he gets outs. Time was called by the home plate umpire, Mark Ripiker. 0-2 on Albert. Nava would be up next, the former Red Sox. Marcello's next pitch on Pujols. That's lined into right center field. Chasing after it is Betts. He jumps up at the warning track and near the wall and makes the catch. That ball kept carrying out there. Albert hit it a long way, but just a long out to end the inning. Another liner that is caught by a Red Sox fielder. No runs, a hit, an error. On AM 830 KLAA. Yolise Jassin still on the mound. His second inning of relief behind Lincecum. Luki Betts, who made that nice running catch out there in right center against Albert Pujols, leads the inning off and takes ball one. It's one ball, no strikes. 4-2 Boston. Each team with five hits as we start inning number seven. And the pitch, that's hit well down the left field side, tight to the line. That one's going to push foul. It had home run distance, but a long strike. Pretty good scramble for that baseball that landed down that left field side. Rookie bets the hitter. Boy, nice running catch on Albert Pujols is out. He caught that and slammed right in the fence right afterwards. Takes that one low and in, two and one. We'll announce our finalist for the 714 ticket, seventh inning sweepstakes in just a moment. Tonight's finalist is one of $50 voucher from 714 tickets. Now a finalist for a chance to win $7,140 as Betts chases the off speed pitch. It's now two and two. And tonight's finalist in the 714 ticket, seventh inning sweepstakes is Richard Loriso of Covina. There's one hit in the air down the right field side. Cole Calhoun has a beat on it toward the line in medium right down near the corner. He'll gather it in. And that's the first out. One away. Pedroia, the next batter. If you'd like to be a participant in the AM830 714 ticket seventh inning sweepstakes, visit am830.net. Keyword is 714 tickets. Pitch on Pedroia, and that one is in there for a called strike. Nothing in one to count. Chassin is a quick worker. He misses low and away with that pitch. A fastball. One and one to count on Pedroia. 
Pedroia has reached base safely in 32 straight games. He doesn't have a 32-game hitting streak, but he's found a way to get on base safely. 32 games in a row, including tonight. And there's a liner that's going to go through into left center field for a one-out hit. He had had two walks and a double play ball before the single with one out here in the seventh. And Bogarts will be the next batter. Fans, listen weekdays to the Trout Tracker with Roger Lodge during Angels on Deck, brought to you by Nexon Tire. When it comes to the best warranty protection in the business, it's Nexon Tires. Go to NexonTireUSA.com. Bogarts, the batter, he has driven in a run, and he has scored a run, so he's been involved in two of their four runs tonight. The league's second leading hitter. He hit 320 last year. He's hitting 330 this season and takes ball one. It's 1-0. One oh. This is the final game of the night in the American League. Still have some action going on in the NL. Here's the next delivery that's on the outside part of the plate. See where Minnesota beat the White Sox tonight 2-1. to one. And all of a sudden there have been some rumors connecting the Texas Rangers to White Sox lefty Chris Sale. Uh, you figure there could be one of the teams that has the pieces that the White Sox would be looking for. For Chris Sale, they got a boatload of talent in their minor league system, and they've got some pieces at the big league level that you could throw in, and it's going to be a king's ransom for Chris Sale. The White Sox decide to trade him. Maybe their teams are going to have to give up <laughs> all their top prospects, that's for sure, and maybe a couple of big league players included. Well, it was at the trading deadline last year when the Rangers got Cole Hamels from the Phillies, and they had to put a big package together to get him. Yeah. And that one uh, has worked out for both teams because Hamels has become the ace of the staff for Texas. He's been very good this year, an all-star. Here's the next pitch. This one is lifted high, and it's hit well in the left field, and this one is gone into the bullpen. In left field, Bogarts with his 13th home run of the season. That's a three-run shot, and that gives the Red Sox some breathing room. They lead it 6-2. to two. Now, this is a sinker from Chassin that did not sink. It stays up in the zone, and when that happens, it becomes very hittable, and Bogarts, being the good hitter that he is, just gets extended. It's it out in the Red Sox bullpen. Angels now trailing 6-2. to two. Second Boston homer of the night. There's Big Poppy at the plate, and Ortiz takes the first one off speed, low and in, 1-0 and the count. That home run for Bogarts. Mentioned number 13, and that's a career high for him. He had only seven a year ago. One ball, one strike on David Ortiz. Next delivery, he chops that one foul. Over by the batter waiting on deck, Hanley Ramirez. So this is a game where the Angels had a 2-0 lead, but the Red Sox have scored six unanswered runs. Shift on with Ortiz batting. He takes outside a fastball, two and two. Yeah, another start where Rick Porcello is getting a ton of run support, six runs on the board. And you were talking about he's had at least four runs in a long string of starts. Yeah, sure has. So tonight, another one to add to the list 15 starts in a row the Red Sox have scored at least four runs for Porcello wow
It counts two and two on Ortiz. Here's the next one from Chassine, and he got him looking. Big Poppy questions that call from Mark Ripiker, the home plate umpire, struck him out looking. Two outs in the inning. I don't know that David Ortiz has ever seen a called strike that he's ever liked, and he didn't <laughs> like that one. He definitely didn't like it, and he might have a lot to be mad about to get a chance to look at this pitch once again. This ball is off the outside plate by maybe a, an inch or two. And Ortiz not happy with that call, and he's really not going to be happy when he goes back and takes a look at that video. So here's Hanley Ramirez taking one, and that's in there. Off-speed called strike. When the Angels bat in the bottom of the seventh, trailing 6-2, Nava, Simmons, and Choi. Well, it looks like Ortiz is now headed right down to the video room. Yeah, and he was talking to himself. There's a foul ball on the left side. Let's pause for stations to identify themselves on the Angels Baseball Radio Network. You are listening to 2016 Angels Baseball on Angels Radio, AM 830 KLAA. Orange County, Los Angeles, and Inland Empire. Terry Smith, Mark Langston, and our producer engineer Darren Chan with you. Friday night baseball. It's Boston up 6-2 here in the seventh. 0-2 pitch. That's low. Fastball missed. One and two, the count on Ramirez. Chassin working in his second inning relief of Lincecum, who allowed four runs in five innings. Six walks by Lincecum tonight. Here's the next pitch, and that's a fastball inside. Two and two. Boy, this one might be a strike on the inside corner, but... You had Carlos Perez setting up way on that outside corner, had to reach all the way across into an umpire's side of line. It, it looks like that there's no way that that ball could be a strike. And the next delivery off speed low, so full count, three and two. Tomorrow night, it's game three of this four game set. Hector Santiago against Drew Pomerantz. A couple of lefties will. Square off against each other. Pomerantz has yet to win a game since the Red Sox recently acquired him. And on the 3 2 delivery, Ramirez takes that one. He is out looking off speed pitch, freezes him. Back to back strikeouts. Off the five freeway on Tustin this is John Andrew Vitella, and you're listening to Angels Baseball on AM 830 KLAA. Daniel Nava at the plate takes the first pitch from Porcello as we get the inning underway. The count's nothing and one. 6-2 Red Sox here in the bottom of the seventh. 0-1 lifted in the air to left field. It's hanging up for Brock Holt. He is under toward the line. He'll make the catch on it. That's the first out. And Drolton Simmons, the shortstop, will be the next batter. 13 of the last 15 have been retired by Porcello. He's had a pretty easy time of it tonight. Simmons has gone 0 for 2, a couple of ground outs. Don't forget, every fan matters when the Angels take on these Red Sox this Sunday. Game time, 12:35. Fans in attendance receive an umbrella hat courtesy of Waba Grill. While supplies last, get your tickets at angels.com. No balls, one strike. Porcello has not had a complete game this season, but he's put together a manageable pitch count here. That was just the 78th pitch of the night, and it's chopped foul on the third base side. Yeah, I think a couple extra runs right there gives him that cushion, and it gives John Farrell a little bit of cushion as far as Porcello get a little bit deeper into this game. Marcelo's had four career complete games. 
And the pitch, this is bounced out towards the shortstop. Bogarts will throw out Simmons. Another easy out. Second time Simmons has hit one to his shortstop counterpart, and G-Man Choi will be the next batter. Tonight's game for Porcello, his 229th start with four complete games, and three of them have been shutouts. Well, welcome to modern day baseball, Terry. Yes. There's the pitch on its way, and that one is in there for called strike. You look at that baseball hat that Porcello is wearing, and it looks like he's had that one for years. He has a lot of the sweat stains on it. Yeah, it looks and like his spring training hat. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, discolored out there that had him the pitch that one is uh, swing and a miss and the count 0 and 2 and that is a good fastball Marcella as we talked about is not overpowering but boy the placement of these pitches he's working every quadrant of the strike zone changing speeds very well fly ball lifted into left field going after it is Holt he's there to make the catch and another quiet inning for the Angels here in the bottom of Jackie Bradley Jr. will lead things off as we head to the eighth inning. And the first pitch, she takes that one for ball one. It's one ball, no strikes. Tonight's attendance, 39,113. 39113. And the next one, it's hit right to Choi, the first baseman. He'll easily beat Bradley Jr. to the bag. And that'll be out number one. Easy play on assisted put out. Aaron Hill will be the next batter. Hill is one for three this evening. He was hitting 283 when he was acquired from the Brewers not too long ago. And he's hit under 200 so far with the Red Sox. Veteran player, he's 34 years old. He had been with the D-backs the last few years. Aaron Hill was originally an Angels draft pick. That was back in 2000. Seventh round pick of the Angels. The Angels never signed him. And then uh, three years later, he was a first round pick of the Toronto Blue Jays. It's a pitch. It's low. So the count two and one. He was acquired just over three weeks ago. Be a free agent at the end of the year. Here's the next pitch, and that's uh, called strike on the inside corner. Yeah, last trading deadline, we the Angels were kind of tied to Aaron Hill potential trade with David Freeze down at the time. Two-two pitch, and that's a little bit low. And last year at the trading deadline, the Angels got three veteran outfielders: got Shane Victorino, David De Jesus. And also uh, David Murphy. And the pitch, and that is a called third strike. Hill is out looking. So Chassin has had three strikeouts against the last four batters going back to last inning, and all three of those hitters who struck out took a called third strike. And some of those pitches have been borderline pitches. Uh, that last one, a slider in off the plate. Seen getting the call right there on Aaron Hill. So two outs here in the eighth, and the next batter is Hannigan, and he pops one up foul. And the Angels catcher, Carlos Perez, right near the Angels on deck circle, will gather it in. Easy out. Quick clean. Radio AM 830. Heading to the bottom of the eighth inning, Angels trailing 6-2. to two. Fans, with every Angels win, be sure to go to angels.com slash OGs to download your coupon for a 14-inch pizza for only $5. OGs, the exclusive pizza sold at Angel Stadium. For all the action here at the bottom of the eighth, here's Terry Smith. Right, thank you, Mark. And the first pitch was right down the heart of the plate on Carlos Perez for called strike. He'll be followed by Petit and then Escobar as we get the bottom of the eighth going 6-2 Boston. 
Marcelo's 84th pitch of the night, and that's a good breaking ball there. Missed for strike two. Perez has driven in one of the two angel runs at an RBI single. Back in the bottom of the second. 0-2 pitch. That's low. One and two the count. Don't forget to join us after the game for the Angels postgame show. We'll have a recap of the scoring, some of the play-by-play highlights, fill you in on what's happening around the majors. Mark Langston will be alongside for postgame analysis. We'll try to get an interview with one of the stars of the game, and it's all coming up right after the action. After that, make sure you join us for Friday night Angel Talk on our flagship station, AM 830. Phone lines will be open after the ball game. There's one fouled back on the right side out of play. On Angel Talk tonight, we'll have Mike Sosha's post-game comments. And your post-game comments as well if you call in. Two and two, the count. There's one fouled off back behind the plate out of play just below us. Well, after tonight, two more games left between these two teams this season. So far, the season series tied at two wins apiece. Angels are going to face the knuckleballer, Stephen Wright, the all-star, on Sunday. Here's a bouncing ball hit right to short. Bogarts will easily get Carlos Perez, and that's the first out here in the bottom of the eighth. So, Porcello is mowing them down right now. He's retired the last six in a row. And he's also set down 16 of the last 18 Angel hitters. Yeah, he is absolutely in a groove. He is changing speeds well. His two-seamer is down in the strike zone. He's worked both sides of the plate very well. And has done a real nice job of keeping Angel hitters off balance. And he's a guy who in his career has had a lot of trouble against the Angels, but not tonight. There's the pitch on Petit. Did he hold up on that one? No. First base umpire Joe West on the appeal says he went after it. Nothing in one to count. There's one that's outside. One ball, one strike. And that one is on the outside corner, a called strike. We talked about it a little bit last night in the opening game of the series, but the Big A has been mobbed with scouts from around baseball for this series. I'm sure a lot of ballparks have been that way here this week. Yep. yep scouts working overtime. It'll be interesting to see what happens if the Angels are going to pull any triggers. You continue to hear about the Red Sox, who have already pulled the trigger on a couple of moves. Whether they're going to try to go after more pitching. They definitely don't need offense. But they're going to try to acquire another bullpen piece. Talked about the Texas Rangers. and Obviously, with... For sales name available. The, there's a lot of going to be a lot of interest in that. There's one foul back. Another uh, name that's floating around prominently is Jonathan Lucroy. Uh, the Brewers and uh, even the uh, Red Sox have been linked to him to some degree. There have been a number of teams for that matter who have been linked to him. And he's having a very good year. He's a good player. Here's the one two. It's bounced right to the third baseman. It's fielded by Hill. His throw will cut down Petit. That's the second out. So here is Escobar, and this might be his last at bat trying to keep that hitting streak going. Go for three tonight. And another name you're you're hearing, and we just were in Kansas City is Wade Davis's name. That is a huge backside bullpen guy, and that's what teams are looking for to bolster their backside of their bullpen. And 
You hear the Washington Nationals attached with Wade Davis from the struggles of Papelbon. Right. Here's the pitch on its way. That's popped in the air in a shallow right field. This is an easy play for Mookie Betts, the right fielder. Escobar is retired. So are the Angels. And that will end the inning. So. Brock Holt will be the batter as we head to the ninth inning. He breaks his bat, chases the first pitch, and grounds it right to the Angels' second baseman, Gregorio Petit, who throws him out. So one pitch and one quick out. The nine-hole hitter retired. Betts will be the next batter. It's 6-2 to two Boston as we start the ninth inning, and Chasin has been the only reliever the Angels have used tonight. And we, we've talked about it ever since he moved to the bullpen. The Angels had not had a, a real true long man all season and he is uh, definitely a guy that is filling that role for the Angels and it is a critical role on a night where the Angels got behind you have to chew up some innings and Chasin has done that he's made one mistake tonight and that was a two seamer that just didn't get down to Bogarts who hit the two run home run off him other than that he has been solid once again Here's the pitch. That ball's hit well by Betts. Trout is chasing. I don't know if he's going to be able to run it down. He is as he makes the catch up against the wall. That one just stayed in play there as Trout kept going back and makes the grab. Boy, when that left the bat, it sure looked like it had a shot to get out, and it's out number two. Boy, you are correct. I thought this one was gone for sure. There was another two-seamer that stayed up in the zone, and... Mookie Betts, their leadoff hitter, 20 home runs he has this year, and that looked like 21, but Trout closed the gap. Turns in to be just a long out. So two quick outs in the inning. Here's Pedroia, and the pitch is a ball. The count's 1-0. and oh. The Red Sox have action in their bullpen, so we'll see whether or not Porcello comes out to pitch in the bottom of the ninth. He's still in their dugout, so you kind of get the feeling that uh, – there's a strong possibility he'll at least start the bottom of the ninth. But, again, he's not a guy that completes many starts. We've touched on that already. It's 2-0 and now on Pedroia. And Joe Kelly, one of the guys out getting loose. There's Ooh. one fouled back. He was, he was in their rotation and now is now out of their rotation. A guy with a very good arm. Just... Has not synced up for him at all. And Porcello is now at 97 pitches. See, see if he goes back out for the night. There's one popped up foul over on the right side. That's going to get back and out of play. I want to remind you when the Angels were batting last half inning in the bottom of the eighth, that was brought to you by our friends at Rotolo Chevrolet in Fontana. Rotolo Chevrolet is pursuing excellence every day. You can visit them at rotolo.com. That's rotolo.com. And joining Joe Kelly out there in the bullpen is Clay Buckholtz, another guy that was in their rotation earlier this year. Yeah. Here's the next pitch, and that one is bounced foul on the left side. In fact, Buckholtz was on the mound where the Angels scored 21 runs in that game, and that was the last start that Buckholtz made. He has not made another start since. Hasn't pitched a whole lot since. Yeah. But both Kelly and Buckholtz in the rotation at the beginning of the year now both are in that Red Sox bullpen. Pitch missed low, so it's a full count on Pedroia, three and two. There's the next delivery, and that is low and away. So that's the first batter that he's walked. That's the seventh walk, however, given up by Angels pitching tonight. And they have a two-out base runner here in the ninth inning. And Bogart to hit a home run against Chassin his last time up. And the seventh will be the batter. When the Angels bat in the bottom of the ninth, Calhoun, Trout, and Pujols, the hitter scheduled. Right-hander against right-hander. First one on Bogarts, and that one is in there. Called strike on a fastball.
Here's the next pitch. Lifted in the air down the right field side, tight to the line. It's going to drop foul. Calhoun was in pursuit, but did not have much of a shot to make the catch in foul territory. Fans, don't forget, join the Angels when they take on the Oakland A's. Next Wednesday night, 7.05 first pitch. Fans will receive a Mike Trout flick motion card. It's courtesy of Fox Sports Go. While supplies last, visit angels.com slash promotions to purchase your tickets today. Here's the next one. And that pitch uh, bounces in and gets away from Perez and goes back to the backstop. That's going to be a wild pitch. Pedroia moves up to second without a throw. Now, Chassin, you kind of wonder if he might be running out of gas right now. Hey, that's 61 pitches. It's like Jose Alvarez is up in the Angels' bullpen. So it's a 1-2 count on Bogarts. Here's the next pitch, and that is a called third strike. He thought it was low. He certainly didn't think it was in the strike zone. Struck him out looking, and the inning is over. So we'll see what the Angels can do in the bottom of the ninth. That's where we're headed. Looks like Porcello will be back out to at least start the position for you at signing. Hey guys, I'm Daniel Nava, and I'm ready for baseball on Angels Radio AM 830. Rick Porcello still out there working here in the ninth inning. He's trying to get a complete game and pick up his 14th win against only two losses. He starts the inning off against Cole Calhoun. The first pitch in there for strike one. And his last loss is all the way back on May 17th. And the next pitch Cole takes outside. Curve ball. Calhoun's had a one for three night. Trout is 0 for three. He's waiting on deck. And then Albert. Be the third batter in the inning. Pujols has gone two for three this evening. There's the next delivery. It's high and away. I remember doing the numbers with Marcelo earlier today. In his last two starts, he's 2-0 and with a 2.77 ERA. His last four starts, he's 4-0 and with a 2.77 ERA. Hmm. Here's the next pitch, and that is a swing and a miss. So the count's 2-2. Two and two. Porcello hasn't walked any. He has struck out three. He's retired the last eight in a row and 18 of the last 20. So it's two balls, two strikes on the Angels' right fielder. Next delivery, grounds one sharply, but right near Pedroia. He's playing back on the outfield grass with the shift on, and he'll throw out Cole Calhoun. That's the first out in the bottom of the ninth. If the Angels lose tonight's ball game, that would mean the Texas Rangers would increase their lead in the AL West against every team in the division. Astros, Mariners, A's have all lost. The Angels are trailing with one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. That's a good day if you're the front runner. Yep. Texas leads Houston by four, Seattle by seven and a half. And the pitch that's in there for a called strike on Trout. And for the Rangers, too, another day off the calendar. That is what is a critical part of it, too, at this time of the year. Here's the next pitch. Trout pops one up. Shallow right center. This should be an easy play. Coming in, under waiting, squeezing it. The center fielder, Jackie Bradley Jr. And Porcello is one out away from his first complete game of the season. Fans, Experian, let's get serious about your credit. Go to Experian.com today. So Albert Pujols will be the batter. The last time Porcello had a complete game back in August of 2014, it was on the road against Tampa Bay. 
on the pitch. That one is in there. Strike one on Pujols. Angels down to their final out tonight. Trailing 6-2. Bottom of the ninth. Here's the next pitch. And that's on the outside corner. Now the Angels are down to their final strike in the ballgame. Marcello has pitched a gem. He's given up only five hits. Angels have had only one hit since the fourth inning ended. Oh and two on Albert. Pitch number 107, and it's grounded to third. This should do it. Hill has it. Albert's an easy out, and the ball game is over. It ends on a 5-3 ground out. Porcello retires the final 11 in a row in 21 of the last 23. Boston wins it tonight, 6-2. That is all we have for you at the moment. We do invite you to stay tuned next. The Angels postgame show will follow on the Angels baseball radio network, driven by Mazda, driving matters. Angels fans. Come out to Angel Stadium and enjoy a game from the comfort of the Lexus Diamond Club. With some of the best views and food in the park, you won't want to miss out. Purchase your Lexus Diamond Club seats today. At